this for somebody who has really brought pride and honor to our country, and that's Alex. So, hello. Yes. We have been experiencing a breakthrough in the international sports arena, and Alex's growing collection of wins in some of the biggest tourneys all over the world just gives us more reason to cheer and celebrate. You know, Alex is historic win at the U.S. Open, and actually even before that with the French Open, with the Australian Open, all these Grand Slam tournaments, mm -hmm. you know, really made her somebody to watch out for in the field of sports. So, Roby, before we proceed, magpasalamat at maghello tayo yes. sa mga importanting tao na nandito uh, with us today. Uh, let me start off with our Chief Finance Officer, Ma'am Riza Ayala. Ma'am, good morning. Bakit, Ma fami kindly, uh, Bakit familiar yung family name nila? Of course, <laughs> mga magulan ni Alex, uh, Roby. Uh, may I also call on Mr. Mike Ayala. Hello, sir. Napaka-importante ng uh, role ng magulang. Right. Uh, At uh, ma-mention ko lang, ah, binulong lang sa akin ng boss ko kagabi. The parents of Alex actually met in BTI. Oh, wow. Ayos. <laughs> and I also know why, I also know why the mom of Alex didn't last in BTI. <laughs> Something to do with the uniform. <laughs> okay. So, so dahil all... dyan. Okay. <laughs> Gina Ayala is my boss. <laughs> Okay. We also would like to welcome Globe's Chief Sustainability and Corporate Communications Officer, Yoli Crisanto. Hello, ma'am. My boss over there. We also have, of course, the Head of Consumer Bank Marketing Platforms and Digital Activation at BBI, Ms. Mariana Zubel de Ayala. And our Chief Customer and Marketing Officer at BBI, Kathy Santamaria. We also have the Head of Corporate Communications at BPI, a former colleague, Elena Torrijos. And Alex's agent at IMG, Carter Lim. Welcome to Manila, Carter. That's a backstage shot at the Carter. Having turned pro just in 2020, Alex truly has soared through rankings and competitions. And to give us a look on our impressive winning journey, let us all watch this. The champ is finally home. It's an honor to give you Globe and BPI's ambassador and the 2022 U.S. Open Girls Junior Single Champion, Alex Ayala. First time ko ma-meet si Alex in person. 
you know, your GLOW family and your BPI family, alam mo naman, are very happy to finally have you here with us, Alex. So, kamusta ka naman since your return? I'm okay. I'm having such a good time. Kasi I'm on break now. I'm on vacation. And it's the first vacation I've had in such a long time. So, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm happy to spend it with you guys and happy to spend very it with good. my family. Vacation ba talaga? I heard you have, you have a lot of events <laughs> since ever since you came back. Well, and the whole day is yeah. uh, quite full for you, right? Well, vacation na din to sa akin. Mm -hmm. Especially because I'm, you know, I've been having a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I've been spending time with my family, as right. I said. So that's really um, what's important to me when I'm on break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm wearing the red shirt of BPI because I want to personally welcome you to the BPI family, Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you. You mentioned that this partnership has a sentimental value for you. Can you expound on this aside from the fact that your parents met in BPI? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, that's the big part of the sentimental value for um, us because I think BPI is really kind of where our family started. They, uh, my parents, they met when they were working in BPI around more or less 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so the first thing I said when I found out that this was going to happen is that this is where my parents met. So. I'm super grateful um, for what opportunities that BPI has given to me and my family. So again, Alex, sa iyong pagbabali, we have this, you know, welcoming home, uh, press con for you. And we want to thank our friends from the media as well, joining us via Zoom in the Visayas and in Mindanao. We want to greet all of you, maayong adlaw sa inyong tanan. So there are about, I believe, close to 100 uh, people joining us um, on ground and via Zoom. So... Without further ado, start na. Start na tayo. Okay. We're gonna start this press conference. We want to open the floor to questions uh, to everybody who's here and, of course, in Zoom. Uh, uh, kindly please state your name and your affiliation, your publication, uh, for everyone's information. And you would want to take this opportunity because after this press con, there will no, no longer be an opportunity for you to talk to her Very busy today. Very puno ang schedule. Ni Alex. At kung wala kayong question, ako marami akong question. But we have somebody raising his hand over there. Maybe we can have a microphone to our friend from... I'm sorry, the lights are... Yeah, there he is. Hello. Hello, Alex. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. And Peter, attention from Marina Standard. Been, uh, for, the longest, for the longest time, since you were eight, I've been following your career. Uh, my question is, uh, it's you're now in the mid 200s. Uh, how tougher, how challenging is the is the are your are your are, are the people you're playing against now? It's not. It's no longer. It's no longer the same opponents that you were playing against. Well, of course, as I climb the rankings slowly, um, my the level of my opponent slowly gets higher and higher. And um, it's one thing for me to transition from a junior to uh, a professional player, and it's another thing for me to transition from the ITF store, the Futures tour, yeah. into the WTA circuit. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now, and you know, I'm trying to work to incorporate myself into that um, higher level circuit slowly, piece by piece. <laughs> How's your training for the past few days? What are you? Uh, what tournaments are you preparing on? Well, actually, right now I'm on vacation. Um, like I said, I am not. Uh, so I haven't been training for the past couple of days. Um, but uh, my next target right now is to try and qualify for um, the French Open. Um, mm -hmm. I have to budget my tournaments because as a 17-year-old, I only have um, 20 tournaments allotted. So my last tournament was Thailand. That was my mm -hmm. 15th tournament. So until Roland Garros qualification, um, I have five more uh -huh. until my birthday for May when it resets. Uh, last question. Uh, uh, who's your coach now and how is he helping you out? Well, right now I'm training at the Rafa Nadal Academy and I'm being handled by two coaches mainly. Um, Adrian Basu and Daniel Gomez, and I'm super happy with um, the relationship I've been able to build with them, and I'm super comfortable with how they support me and how you know they handle my tennis. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you, much, sir. Peter. Ganun pala yon, Alex, mo? No? 20 tournaments yes. in a year oh. for, oh, okay. for a 17-year-old. When All I right. turn 18, 
wala nang limit and so on. New knowledge for me. <laughs> and you're ranked 214 now. Yes. Towards the end of the year, will it be your top 100? Ah, mm. No. <laughs> Siguro yung next presser natin na sa top 100. Siya. Another friend of ours, um, Diane uh, Castellejo, has been following you also uh, in your career. Ola Di, buenos Hi, dias. So nice to see you, Lisa. And um, congratulations on your new endorsement of BPI. You know, Lisa was my colleague in ABS-CBN, so... Our loss is Globe's gain. But wow. <laughs> Gracias por love, todo. Now we love Lisa. She's one of my, my good friends. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Alex, so you have a fantastic life. Um, you know, ever since. Uh, it's a tough life, but it's, you know, it's obviously very successful. Um, when you come back to the Philippines, I know you've been used to living life on the road since you were seven or eight. But can you share what are some of the things that you like to do when you're here, aside from being with your parents? Well, <laughs> I mean, are, are there some things that you look forward to that you that you kind of like tell my mom, oh, I, I have to do this or, yeah. Um, well, I guess it's just like certain kinds of foods, um, you know, that I come back, I have a lot of Pinoy food. And oh, you do? Yeah, well, when I, <laughs> well, every time I come back, I always get barbecue. And mm. <laughs> barbecue? Every time I come back. Chicken? No, pork. Oh, pork. <laughs> pork. Strictly pork. <laughs> Pork barbecue. Yeah, and then um, <laughs> I spend a lot of time with my cousins because mm. most of, a lot of the times that I'm back, it's for holidays or whatever, and or summers, and on. so they also come back from school, from university. So I spend a lot of time with my cousins, um, and this is actually the f one of the first times I've been home and not training. So it's also a new experience for me. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm training a lot, so. I'm just enjoying my time, um, taking advantage of the time that I have to do my homework uh, and finish my school. Oh, can you tell us about your school, by the way? Um, so, yes, well, where are you I, up to now? I am in my senior year of high school, mm. and uh, I enrolled in an online school for my last year because I found that um, it became more difficult for me to manage my time um, when I had to be in class you yeah. know, for exams. Um, in-person classes, so I found it easier that uh, now I'm in online school and I can manage my time and manage my work as well. Yeah, I know you were an honor student also when you were in CSA and even in um, Nadal Academy. I remember you, you would tell me now when you're in tournaments, you never, you don't want to study and you just do it all after, but you still manage to. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, <laughs> never mind, I won't ask like that question. <laughs> Um, you, you know, congratulations on qualifying for the Australian Open Quali. Super excited about that. And also for qualifying for the 250K in Thailand. Can you tell us how was your experience uh, winning those two matches in the qualifying? And then uh, you eventually lost in the main draw to a rank 60 to 70 player. Can you tell us what were some of the differences that you saw in your, in your game that you obviously need to move up to? Well, uh, she was obviously a very experienced player, and I knew that coming into the match, so I feel like she has a very strong uh, mental aspect coming in, and um, of course, it's always a learning experience, and her, her game style wasn't one that was very, that's very common in, in, the, in the circuit, so... Not common. Not, not common. Okay. Yeah, so I would say that even though I lost, I'm super happy to be exposed to the to different kinds of you know playing styles so that i know what i need to work on moving forward yeah so uh, i just realized now yeah, that you only have five tournaments left until for uh, before the french qualifying so do you you think you'll get in the qualies or you still need to maintain your 214 215 well that depends on um that depends on a lot of factors well i have to defend points and hopefully gain points if I can and yeah. it also depends on who joins the tournaments and who's going to back out so right it's g yeah. give or take if I, I I hope so I'm not I, I really don't know because it's also my first it would be if I got in it would be my first French Open yeah so professionally is I guess it's safe to say that you're also hoping to qualify for Wimbledon yes well I think for a tennis player, the goal is really to join the Grand Slam. So those are going to be my goals for, for this year is to get into as many Grand Slams as I can. Last story. <laughs> okay. Um, 
you know, life on the tour is super hard, but what are some of the things that you enjoy about it? And what are some of the things that you um, maybe have a challenge? Um, well, I like that I'm exposed to so many different cultures and so many different mm -hmm. people. So I get to learn a lot about the different countries, how, you know, how the different people, you know, in different countries, how they interact with others, you know, their, you know, their tendencies. Um, what I don't like so much is sometimes maybe I would like to spend time, more time with my family, complete, like my complete family, because mm -hmm. a lot of the times we're separated. Um, but even other than that, uh, I still consider myself super lucky to be able to travel and have this lifestyle. Yeah. Oh wait, last pahaba, sorry Lisa. So many people kasi asked me, yung speech mo dun sa US Open Juniors, it was super, super, super good kasi tsaka maraming nagtaka na nagtagalog ka talaga, medyo malalim. So, even, yeah. That so, was actually very good. Huh? It, it was, was actually very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very good. <laughs> So, ang tanong ng marami, tinuro ba yun ni, Liz, ni Risa sa'yo, your mom? <laughs> or was it, <laughs> what, or your dad, or, like, did you actually prepare that? Or was that just like, you just thought about it at the, at the precise well, moment? Well, I knew na gusto ko mag-Tagalog sa speech, but I didn't um, really set it na parang word for word, you know, this is what I, I kind of had an idea, but, syempre, it's more focusing on the match rather than on the speech I would have if yeah. I won, because I don't want to, assume that I'll win and it will mess up my yeah. mentality basically yeah well so well thought of <laughs> good job mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> thank you Diane thank yes, you very sir. much Diane hello sir good morning po uh, Edwin Rulion from metropolar.net good uh, morning po kay Alex kung uh, playing for the national team especially in the coming Southeast Asian game is it still included in your schedule well, that's a good question because I know that um, it's around May 6, I think. But uh, it, I would love to represent the Philippines again in the SEA Games. But from what I know, it might um, interfere with the qualities of um, French Open mm -hmm. and the preparation prior. So I haven't yet signed with my team and discussed whether um, that's something uh, that's going to be included in the schedule, for sure. Uh, ano ba ang setup ng Philippine Olympic Committee sa iyo bilang player? Kasi until now, suspended pa rin yung National Association of Tennis. Um, uh, sorry. Ah, hello. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think that POC has been quite supportive to me um, lately. But as for the Philippine Tennis Association... There's uh, 20 tour tournaments in a year. So, bago niya makuha yung talagang target na ranking, hopefully number one tayo. Ano po yung involvement ng Globe and BPI para sustain, masustain yung uh, participation niya sa mga tournament? Kasi mabigat po yung uh, resources wise, uh, mabigat ang guest losing. The presence of our big bosses here exactly, is uh, I was just about to say. testament that we will be with, uh, with Alex all the way through. All the way through. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, sir. We can get you more information on that after. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to question. Oh, my. I was ready to call my boss, Yoli. Okay. All right. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Alex. Uh, Luisa from Philstar. Good morning, Luisa. Um, it's been around three years since you joined the pros. Uh, I think you started March 2020 before the pandemic. Uh, looking back, I guess, how have you seen yourself grow and where do you want to see yourself maybe at the end of the year and maybe this time next year? That's a nice question, yes. I think I'm super happy with my development and I am I am proud of what I've done because I know the work that it took me to get here. Um, even though it's very early in my career, um, I believe that I've worked quite a lot. Um, and my main goal for this year, uh, like you said, uh, my main goal is really to just be um, more involved in the WTA circuit, to join more WTA tournaments and, of course, the Grand Slams. Um, now, my goal is also to get the ranking that will allow me and able me to do that. Um, and if I can get even higher, then even higher. And I haven't set like a specific number for the end of the year, but as high as it can go. I'll take as high as it can go. <laughs> yeah. And you talked about being in your senior year, obviously. 
college is also in the picture. Your Kuya Miko is in the NCAA Division One tournaments. Um, I guess you see yourself also doing that or maybe online school with uh, going through the pros still after this. Well, right now, I don't see myself um, joining Division One or any, how would I say, normal <laughs> college uh, program. But I do still want to continue my education after I graduate high school. Um, on top of my tennis career, because I, I do believe it's very important uh, to keep the mind working and just to develop who you are as a person. So if ever I would do maybe some online courses, but I won't take the whole, um, like the whole curriculum. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Louisa. Uh, hold that thought, Miss. Hold on. Uh, we do have friends uh, joining us again uh, in besides in Mindanao via Zoom. So. Please just key in your questions. We have a team that will get your questions and will ask away. Mm -hmm. All right? So while they're getting ready for that, kindly. Hi, Alex. It was nice to see you. Uh, Kate from spin.ph. Um, Alex, you play like 100 matches a year. Um, what makes a great tennis match for you? And like which aspects do you consider for, for you to call it a fulfilling match? Um, for me, what I consider w one of the best matches or the best wins, I would say, is when I'm having a bad day or when I'm not feeling the ball or when I'm just not, I'm just not there at that day. But I find a way to turn it around and even though I'm playing bad, I find a way to, you know, to win and to win ugly, even though it's not the, the prettiest way to win. I, I think that those are the best victories because um, even when you're on your lowest days or when you're not feeling well and you still find a way to win, it's all the more fulfilling. Um, last question for me. Uh, Alex, at this point, your feet is the best finish by any Filipino netter. What kind of pressure do you deal with knowing that yourself is your biggest competition? Uh, I think that I'm still very young and I guess that's one of the reasons why I don't feel a lot of pressure, um, at least from an outside perspective. I, from people outside, uh, I don't feel that pressure on me. Um, if anything, it's just the expectation I have of myself. And, you know, I work very hard, so I do tend to have some expectations for myself. And, um, you know, it's just uh, finding a way for me to manage that. But it's not that I don't believe that that's because I'm a tennis player. I think everyone has, you know, their own expectations of what they want to do with their lives. And, you know, this is just my, this is just my process and how I need to deal with it. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Hi, Alex. Hi. I'm Vigo from Rappler. And I saw that you were hitting with Bianca Andrescu. So who are your, like, current, like, idols in the... WTA circuit now that you know you're also in it. Well, right now I'm uh, really impressed with how Sviatek has been playing, how Iga has been playing, and um, you know I think she's someone who who people can look up to because she's also very nice off the court. I've met her a couple years back, and she's very down to earth. Um, I also like the I've also been into the recently retired Ashley Barty. Um, I think she was she was also a very nice person off the court, and she had a really intense work ethic, and that's something that I can take away from the players on tour. Yeah. yeah. And now that you're in the WTA, what makes you excited, or what's the thing that excites you the most when you're playing in that kind of tournament? Well, I think that it's just the fact that it's a new experience for me, and it's another opportunity for me to. Uh, to improve my tennis and to get more experience. And, um, you know, I think with every match, I get better and better. So um, I think it's an opportunity, just another opportunity for me to improve. Yeah. Uh, is there something different about the vibe of it, the ambience of playing in high-level tournaments? Of course. There's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a different feeling than when you're walking on the court and, you know, you have an escort or, <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's ball kids. Uh, it's, of course, it's a different... So you get goosebumps? Uh, a little bit. Yes. Okay. Um, but when it comes to the intense moments, it just it feels exactly the same as all the other matches. Whether you're playing in a court 
you know, with a wooden fence or you're playing in a court where, you know, rod labor, I believe that the intense moments will all feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thank Alice. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. I'm Ivan Swing from the Daily Tribune. Hello, Alex, Ivan. I'd like to ask, uh, how long will you be staying here in the Philippines before you go back to Spain for training? Well, I, my flight is scheduled to leave on the 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Ready. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to, to clarify, uh, you said back then that uh, you'd like to utilize your final year in the juniors to play for a few more Grand Slams. Will that still be possible or will you be fully committed na for uh, uh, in the professional circuit? Well, my priority right now is to join, is to join professional tournaments and to um, work on my ranking, professional ranking, my WTA ranking. Um, if I see that there's a good opportunity for me to, you know, to improve, and it fits in the schedule, um, that 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 week will be um, necessary for me to compete. Then I don't see a problem in joining the Junior Grand Slams. But as I said, um, my goal right now is to join the professional Grand Slams, and that will be my focus for. I guess the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, final question for me. Uh, since 2020, what, has, what have you noticed that have been the biggest change in your game, in your skills lately? Well, I, now I feel a lot uh, stronger physically. I've been really working on my fitness with my fitness coach, and um, that's been a big priority in my, in my tennis. And I think that's the next step I need to improve further. Okay, that's all for me. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Ivan, thank you very much. Hey. Nakakatuwa, no? Marami na ngayon talaga kailangan nakahom. <laughs> they can even go live with that thing. Right. right. Alex, you... Alex yes. common reaction when they first see you? Common reaction when they first see you? Ang takad mo raw pala. How tall is Alex Ayala? <laughs> I'm 5'8". 5'8". Five eight. Five eight. Five eight. Wow. Five eight. You're as tall as my father. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Okay, very yes, good, sir. very good. Sir, good morning. Hi, Thank good you. morning. I'm LA from eLife, Sal Manila. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Alex. And it was nice meeting you after probably seven or eight years when you were still very young. Um, my first question is, um, looking back when you were young, was there a time that you would question yourself, why are you in the tennis court which your grand grandfather was teaching you? Was there ever time you questioned, why am I doing this? I should be playing my, my toys. I should be playing with my doll and my friends. Was there a certain time you you, you uh, question yourself? Well, with the uh, Lolo I have, you don't question it. Talaga. <laughs> okay. You don't question it. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the sport. And I always knew why I wanted to be there, um, to spend time with my Lolo, spend time with my brother. And it was, you know, it was hard, but it was a fun time. And I am super grateful that he pushed me the way he did because it built character and, you know, it's a big part of why I am who I am today. Now, the, now that you're in the top 200, uh, was this part of your goal uh, at this moment to reach uh, at this peak of your career? Well, um, I think that my ranking has dropped a lot um, in the past year. And uh, this was, I think, one of my goals was to get to the top 250. Um, and I did it, and now I, I am fortunate enough and I'm blessed enough to be able to have the opportunity to create new, a new goal yeah, for myself. Now, last question. What's your message to the youth, those who would like to be like you, since you put the Philippines on top of the map in terms of tennis uh, for uh, uh, under 18? What's your inspirational uh, message to them? Well, I think that um, everything you do or anything you do, you should do it with passion. If you decide to pursue a career in, um, in tennis, then you do it with passion. Or if you only want to get a scholarship to college, then you also do it with intensity, you do it with passion, and you pay attention to the little details. At least that's what I try to do. <laughs> thank you very much, and more power. Thank you. And thank you very much, sir, for that last question, because that, uh, that's exactly the same question that we received from Zoom. Yeah, we want to acknowledge the uh, Vispin uh, team, uh, the reporters that sent that question. It was exactly the exactly. same question. Sure, that you have. So, okay, na, okay, yeah. Next. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Alex. Ivan from Dagot Philippines and PNA. So, just a corollary to your question from Sir Edwin, because this year is also the Asian Games from September 23rd to October 8th. So, Alex, is that also part of your calendar, the Asian Games? 
Oh, I would love to join the Asian Games. I've never um, competed in that yet. And I've heard very good stories and very good experiences from other players. Um, but again, I will have to check if it uh, collides with any of the important tournaments that I plan to um, that I plan to join this year. But it's definitely I'm super open to um, to joining and representing the team if it you know if it just got, like fits well into the schedule. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have yes, sir. Hi, Sid. Morning. Hi, uh, good morning, Alex. Uh, Sid Ventura from ESPN Philippines. Uh, you've won uh, Grand Slams in Australian Open, Roland Garros, and of course, US Open. These are all, you know, different surfaces. Uh, do you have a, part uh, a favorite surface, and which surface do you think is the toughest to compete in? Well, I grew up playing on hard courts, so that's really where I feel I'm most comfortable. And, you know, um, I was introduced to clay courts and grass courts a bit later um, than than hard, so I guess it's not as natural for me to compete in those um, in those surfaces. But despite that, I think that I have some decent, some pretty good uh, results in other surfaces. But I would say that hard is really my preferred surface. You're being with the Rafa Nadal Academy. Um, is there any particular uh, focus on playing on clay because of course Nadal is the king of clay. Uh, is, there, uh, you know, is there any uh, advantage to that? Where I practice uh, or the surface I practice on depends on my next tournament. So if my next tournament's on hard, I'll practice on hard. If my next tournament's on clay, I'll practice on clay. That's how it works. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. But how often is Rafa Nadal actually there in the academy? Very often, very often. Okay. Um, Every time I think that he's not traveling mm -hmm. and he needs to train in Mallorca, he will train there. And he talks to the training. He, he talks to, not during the training, yes. but... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, outside the training. Outside the training, yeah. yes. Not during the training, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Which brings me to my next question right. from Zoom. What Segway. advice from Rafa Nadal gave you the most impact for both your career and personal From growth? Abysmin Media. Uh, well, he said multiple times to surround yourself with uh, people. And I... Being on the tour and traveling so much since I was such a young age, I believe that that's really an important guideline, I would say, um, to be surrounded by good people and to learn good habits. Um, and aside from that, it's just, you know, he doesn't need to to directly talk to you to give you advice. So surround, surround yourself <laughs> with uh, good people, so it will take you to greatness. He said the next question is uh, for you to ask. Uh, yeah, uh, we can hold this question for now so we can entertain more questions. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, good morning. Congratulations. How do you strike a balance between your busy life and uh, your personal um, affairs? Um, for this year, 2023, my main goal is really to, as I said, to incorporate myself into the into the WTA circuit more. And with that comes, you know, an improvement with ranking, hopefully. Um, but I haven't set a specific goal in terms of ranking, like a number. Um, but yeah, that's my goal to be in the WTA circuit more. Um, as for long-term goals, of course, to win a Grand Slam, you know, join the Olympics, maybe medal, or you know, be world number one. Those are just a couple. I, you know, a lot of there's a lot of things that I want to do. Hopefully. How do you strike a balance between your usually hectic schedule and then your personal life? How do you wind up after a long day? Well, I usually try to, you know, do things that don't require a lot of energy because um, I'm oftentimes very tired from training. I'll you know, just have a meal with my friends or, or stay in and watch a movie. Uh, but, you know, it helps that I'm surrounded with people who are, you know, who have similar goals in me and who are living a similar lifestyle so they understand you know when we're tired when we don't want to go out or you know when they understand the struggles so it's people that you know th those are the things we can relate to in in our friendships you know, yeah thank you so much thanks sir thank okay. you very much. And we have time for one last question from the floor but we have one more question from Zoom. Hi, Alex. I'm Pauline from CNN Philippines. Um, Hi, Pauline. Welcome back to the country. Um, how refreshing is it to be back home, and how important is a break like this for a high-level athlete like you? It's very important. I think that rest is also 
um, a big part of, of the journey and it's a big rest is also a part of improvement. Um, and to just have this time to be with my family and to share all of my success with them and um, you know to just also to connect with you know to connect with BPI and to connect with to connect back with Globe and um, just have this opportunity to to you know be with the press and have um, organized my affairs and yeah to really reconnect. And um, Alex, obviously, you're blazing a trail for a lot of Filipino athletes, and not just Filipinos, but women uh, in particular. And since it's Women's Month next month, March, what's your message to women who also want to break barriers? And in a way, is that also a source of pride for you that here you are, you're a girl, you're representing the Philippines, and you're making waves as a Filipina? Well, I'm super proud uh, of our Filipino athletes, and especially our Filipina athletes, I think. There's a lot, been a lot of success in, in women's sports in the Philippines um, in these past couple of years, like the like Heidelin Diaz or the women's uh, national soccer team. So I think that's a great movement, and I think it um, it has a lasting impact. Yeah. Okay. Lastly, any plans to help the grassroots program here in the country? Uh, sorry, can you like expand any, on that? Um, do you plan on holding your own, maybe like school or in the future, or any plans to you know to also build and help aspiring athletes? Well, of course, in the future, I would love to um, set up programs that will help um, you know the youth. But uh, it's I think it's important to remember that I'm still the youth. I think. You know, I'm still 17 years talking about uh, building out schools. I'm still in school, right? So right now, uh, you know, at my very young age, I think the biggest thing I can do is to hope to inspire the young kids. You know, right now I'm still at a place in my life where I have to focus on myself and my career. So um, the only thing I can hope is that they'll, you know, they'll be a little inspired from what I try to do. Right, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, for you. Okay, we have a question from uh, Yasmin Dormida of Digicast Negros. Thank you for sending this in. Having excelled in the sport at a young age, does that put pressure on you to make sure you don't fail those who believe and support you? Good question. <laughs> um, as I said uh, before, I don't feel uh, a lot of pressure from you know, from a lot of supporters. And I think that that's because I believe if you're a supporter um, and the person you support fail and you stop supporting them, then you weren't really a supporter to begin with. And my biggest supporters, I would say, are my parents, you know. And even when I fail, parents are still there. So that's what I believe a real supporter is. So that they don't just support you when you're doing well. It's in all the moments, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Nice you want to ask the last I'll question give you right the here. honors of uh, because related to Globe. Okay. Sige, Lisa. <laughs> so um, this is something very close to our heart at Globe, you know. Uh, how do you feel in making a difference by supporting the Hapag movement? I think that the Hapag movement is really an intimate, like, Cause I, I don't know. How, I wouldn't say intimate, but it's a very meaningful. It's a meaningful cause, and I do believe that it makes a difference in people's lives. Or I don't know if that's big or if it's small, but I I am happy that I'm associated with with such with something that gives a lot of help to other people and that can at least improve the lives one way or another. With that, maraming salamat to everybody, Alex, and to our friends in the media, both here and on Zoom. Unfortunately, this is all the time that we have right now. Uh, so to wrap up our session, we are going to give the floor to you, Alex, for some closing uh, remarks to your friends, supporters, fans. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for taking the time to be here um, and spending the time with me and... Um, I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate all your support. Um, I hope that I will be able to do this more often and to be able to connect with you guys um, more frequently. And you know, I this really makes a difference in my trips back home because I feel all the love and all the support from all around the country. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Alex. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, once again.
a salute to our world champion Alex Ayala. Thank you. Thank you very much. I saw my dad. <laughs> so thank you everybody who joined us here at TGT, uh, as well as those who joined us via Zoom. Uh, we are just going to have a little bit of a photo opportunity with our um, colleagues at Globe and, of course, at DPI. Mm -hmm. And let's so all again, continue. Sorry, let's all continue to wish her all the best and send her all the good vibes for her upcoming matches. Once again, this has been Robbie Mercado. And this has been Lisa Reyes of Globe. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day ahead. Have a good day, guys. Bye, guys.